What's going on everybody? Welcome to another edition of Acts of Creation. Today we're going to be taking a look at Tools Vicarious. It's a really fun song to play, yet it can be kind of confusing with the amount of riffs and the little variation and fills that they put in throughout. If you're comfortable playing with Tool songs, then you really should have no problem learning the parts. You'll just take you a little while to get the memorization down of everything. And if you're just kind of getting in the Tool and having some fun and this is one of your favorite songs, then I hope this helps and it'll get you there. But it is one of the more challenging because... Again, because the amount of riffs there are and the little variations throughout. So, quick thing about sounds before we get started. You don't need that many. Two would be good. A uh, nice, maybe semi-dirty, clean sound uh, with some chorus and delay on it for the intro riff and then a good old heavy sound for the rest of it. Now, meter-wise, most of the song is in 5-4. The choruses are in 6-8 and 4-4. Four, four, and obviously there are some little meter fills just to, to uh, and capture the time within the fills. Tuning wise, like every Tool song, we're in a drop D tuning. And the first chord of the song is based off, guess what, your D chord. So we're going to be 5th fret of the A string. And if you know how to play 46 and 2, it's, it's basically a lot of that. So this riff is kind of confusing to learn at first because there's three different variations, but the first half of each variation is the same. So kind of use that to your advantage. So you have this. That's the riff, and you play that four times. So let's break that down a little bit. You have this pattern. That's the main idea of the whole riff. So you have... Five, seven, eight on your D string, five, seven on your G and your D, and then five, seven, eight again. So, like I said, that's the main motif. And then the ending, little power chord on your D string, and then the second ending, it's going to be a minor third, five in your D. 7 on your A. So you have this slowly. So that's the first two parts of the riff. And then the third part, do that same thing three times in a row. So you have that 5, 7, 8, 5, 7, three times. So like I said, this riff can be a little tricky to memorize at first, but once you get it, it's not too bad. So let me play the, the whole thing through nice and slow for you. There you go, and you can do that four times. And then at the very end, the fourth time, you actually end on the... And you can swell in on that note. Um, just a quick note about playing that riff, I would mute the whole thing and then maybe semi-mute or don't mute those accent riffs so they kind of stand out. Kind of like that. Play with it and see what works best for you. So, kind of like I said before, I'm not going to walk you step by step through this song, I'm going to just show you all the riffs. And then you can see the order when I play along with it and look at the tabs. So, the, these riffs I've labeled my own names just for lesson purposes. So we have riff 1, which is this one. You have a one string open, 12, 10, and 15. Those are your main notes. So you have O, O, 10. Then you're going to hammer on O, 15, and then hit a power chord. 15. And then that leads us into riff 2, which is this. Fun riff to play. I like it a lot. So you're going to slide from 13 to 12 on your A string and you're going to mix in the low D with it. And then you slide back up. And in between, you're going to mute just the low string open, and then you have the hammer on the 15 power chord. And then to get in the 
verse, you can hit the low string, uh, low power chord, and the full power chord. You don't play anything in the verse. You have some. You can fill in with your open strings. You gotta fill in that, and then the guitar feeds back. Basically, you can get that note on the 17th fret of your G string. And then you're going to repeat those opening riffs. And like I said, there are some fills and variation within them. Um, like when you play riff 2 the second time, you're going to play it four times, but on the third time, you're going to go 15 0, 10 Like that. Download the tabs, you can see the whole thing in proper order. Um, when you play Rift 1, after that, there is another variation in it, and that's on the 10th fret. If you're familiar with Jambi and this little pull-off string triplet thing that he likes to do, it's in the pot as well. You have... Right there, and you do that every other time. And what you're going to do, play the low string open... 10, pull off open, hit your A string, and back to your low string open. Like that. And then that takes you right into verse 2. Uh, right, verse 2 is... Somewhat complicated to hear because there are two guitar tracks going on at the same time and there's heavy delay on both. So this is one of those instances where you can pretty much play in the ballpark of what's going on. I'm sure Jones plays it slightly differently live than what's on the recording. Um, this is what I do. It works best for me. You can check it out. If you like to play it another way, then feel free. Um, I like to play the first intro riff, the first part of the intro riff, the same. Like that. And then after that, we're going to take out this note, this fifth fret of your D string, and just jump up to that G string. So, and you're going to do that two times in a row, so like this. And then at the end, we put it back in. That works best for me. Again, it's, it's tough to hear, so... Don't get hung up on it if it sounds a little awkward. And that's going to take you back into the other riffs. Um, the chorus of the song, you have meter change. It's two halves. You have 6-8 and 4-4. Four, four. You have the third fret of your low string and the second fret of your D string three times. And then that moves up. You can play the octave on your D string. And then a power chord shape. Even though it's not a true power chord, you can drop D, 5 and 7. And then the 10th fret. That's your 6, 8. Then we're going to switch into 4. You have big open power chord, 3rd fret, and 5th fret on the upbeat, which is kind of cool. Right there, you have that nice triplet motif. O three five in your D string. Jones loves to use that, and then you're gonna play third fret of your A string, and then fifth fret with an open. So that whole thing. chorus riff, and for the most part of the song, you play that three times. Um, the, ne well, the next different riff in the song is the first chug riff, and this one is this. And that's just your low D string open with a nice heavy palm mute. You can think of it as number-wise, how many chugs. You have five, one, two, two, and then a two at the end of that. So after you play that chug riff, you're going to go back into the chorus, and then after the chorus, you have a different chug riff, chug riff 2, we can call it, and it's slightly different. Um, you have a 4, 1, 2, 
and then two at the end of it again. And you're going to play that four times, excuse me, eight times, and then the bass solo kicks in, and when the bass solo kicks in, you're going to go back to the other chug riff. So you have... You can listen to it, and like I said, when I play along, you can see all of that go on. So after the bass solo, you have a very cool breakdown riff. It's really fun to play. It mimics the rhythm of the chug riff, except you're going to add uh, some melodic melody notes to it. And the easiest way to think about it is in four different phrases make up the whole riff. So the first phrase, you have the notes 5 and 3. second part of it is 7, 5, 3. The third part is 8, 7, 3. And then back to 7-5-3. And you chug your low string between them. Like I said, it's the same rhythm, slightly different than the first chug riff. So you have this. And you do that two times. And then it's actually four times, but there's going to be a little variation in the riff. So the third and fourth time, you're going to add this. A little triplet, 0, 3, 5 on your low string, 3, 5 on your A. So you have that. And you do that twice, and that takes you back to the first riff when the song starts to climax. So after you play that first riff again, you're going to go into a heavy variation of the verse riff, so you have this. So basically you have the main motif of that riff. And then you have 5-8, and then 5-7, a little hammer on. So you have... artificial harmonics halfway through because you're going to do that riff eight times and on the fourth time you had that little scream or squeal fill. So next you have this very cool breakdown riff. You have it's all down in third and fifth position. That's one time and you play this riff twice and then you're going to start chugging sixteenth notes to build it up and add power chords. So what that is you have five, oh, oh, three, oh, oh, five. start playing those power chords, the intensity really picks up, and we're actually going to take out that third fret note, just hit an extra open in 6-5. So we're going to play that a couple times, and then we're going to take those chords and jump them up into, or move them up into 12th position, so you can play these nice full extended power chords, which Jones uses all the time. And then you have 12, 10, 13, 12. It's the same riff. see that I have 15 and 17 to get out of it, and then it brings you all the way back to riff 2, which was this, all right, and then we have a fill into the chorus, and that fill is 03, 05, 03, 10, and then when you play this chorus, the chords in the middle are open and a little heavier, more aggressive than you played it before, so you have this, And then you have the final outro riff, which is just some open string chugs in your D, third fret, second fret. Then you have this cool triplet fret on your D 
D and A string, 035, on both strings. Like that. Then on the fourth time, you're going to extend that triplet motif and it's basically one big drum solo fill. And you're going to go D, A, D, A. time, you're just going to stay on your D and A. And then your low string open, accent note, end song. Good job. So this song is really difficult to go through, describe part by part, because there are so many variations and little tiny fills. So like I said, I'm going to play through the song. You can see all the riffs in context. You can download the tabs, and everything will be marked out for you. So, I hope this helps. Good luck, and until then, see you next time. Thanks a lot.